All right, if you would. How many of y'all got this, this bad boy with you today? You ready to get in it? All right, go with me to Numbers 14. And when you get to Numbers 14, I want you to say truth. Come on, you there? Come on. Truth. You with me? If I remember, if I remember, I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this, all right? We're just going to, we're just, from now on, when we start flipping the scriptures up in the beginning of service, I'm just going to say, say truth. You know what? Because truth gets, truth is truth, but the world muddies it. The world says this is truth, that's truth. You got your own truth, I got my own truth. This is the truth. Amen. And so we'll have a little bit of fun with that as a church family, amen? If I remember, I'm going to try to do that. So next week, we'll flip our Bibles open, get there, truth. All right, we're getting ready to read some truth today. Uh, Last night, uh, start with this. Last night, it was about, I don't know, 6 o'clock, I was outside. It was crazy last night. The weather, uh, just trying to get a little work done and... In and out of the garage, and man, it was just thundering, just cracking, lightning, and just rain, hammering, raining. And uh, one of the things I've learned in scriptures is the Lord thunders with his voice. And when, when, when I hear thunder, I, I stop, and I'm like, that's God. That, that's God, because only God can make thunder. And so I was, uh, I was just... Standing outside, outside, trying not to get electrocuted from the lightning and things like that. But I'm just in awe of just, just God's power. And, and I, I go in the house, house and I get a phone call uh, from some very, very beloved people in our church. And uh, come to find out that uh, Tim Dixon had passed away last night. And uh, I want you to be in prayer for the family. Uh, he was a man who got saved watching our live broadcast, which is amazing. We got to spend some time with him at his house in the hospital a few times here and there. But I want you to pray for the family. But as, I'm, as I was thinking about last night and that thunder and just the glory of God in that moment, and then I get in and, and I, I got that message from Chris. And I've just begin to think, oh my goodness, the glory that Tim is in right now. I mean, when we say the glory of God is the manifest presence of God in all of his splendor, man, you know who gets to be in the glory is my friend and your friend, Tim. This morning, right now. And last week, we launched into a, a series, the Ministry of Glory. Ooh, I love the ministries of our church, but my favorite ministry is God's ministry, where God just shows up. And this morning, I'd like to talk about, uh, it, it's a man that was transformed by the glory of God, and it lasted his whole life. And I hope, I don't know about you, but I, if you've, if you've been, been here, but I hope that, that maybe you've, you've had a moment in his glory that tr- has transformed, transformed your life, and, and you will never be the same because of it. If, if you've, you've never, never had that, that I, pray I pray that you, you get that at some point. point. One, One of the, the things, things I've learned is the splendor of God and the blessings of God are profoundly intertwined. And that's that's why why I said said last week that it seems that that God's glory, His presence, is greater greater with us when God God is glorified by us and in us. And And so when when we we come come together together like this, and and, and, and and we're singing, and and we're we're fellowshipping, and we've got our Bibles in our hands, and and we're we're just sitting here, we're just gathered together, together. I hope and pray that that you're over here like, man, I don't know what I can do, but I'm going to do everything I can to glorify God today. 
I might not know every word to every song. I might not know how they sing. I, I might not get to hear every prayer that somebody says. I might not know every person's name sitting next to me and around me. But whatever I do, I want to glorify you personally. If, if in every chair in this place, we would all come to church with that kind of heart, man, could you imagine the kind of glory that we're giving to God on a week-to-week -week basis? And I'm telling you, I've learned and I've seen it. When, when, when we all come together and glorify God, God's glory is more pre apparent to us. It's like we can see it, God's, God's glory on display. Last week we talked about His goodness on display. This morning I want to talk I want to kind of zero in on God's power on display. And God's power has a way of transforming people's lives. And when you are transformed by the glory of God, your perspective on your whole life just changes. You get to a point where you, you've been in the glory of God, and the only option that you can think to do is to give yourself wholly to Him. You, you, you've, been, you've been in the presence of God in such a very clear way where you're, you're op, like, your option number one, two, and three is like, I just have to surrender to Him. You're God, and I'm not. Look at Numbers. Let's, Let's start, start in chapter, chapter 14. We're, We're also going to be in Joshua 14, if you, if you saw that, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's, Let's just read, read a few verses, verses and I want to actually back up a chapter, chapter after we read these three verses. verses. Um, maybe, maybe four verses. verses. Numbers, Numbers 14, 21. 21. Let's, just, Let's start, start with this. this. But as truly as I live, this is the Lord talking, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely... They shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein two he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now let's back up just a little bit to chapter 13. You say, what would cause God to say something like this about a man? What would cause God to say, out of all these people, this one had another spirit with him? And when, I, when he says this one had another spirit and he couples it with blessings, I'm over here like, okay, I want a little bit of what he's got. What did he have? What did this guy have that caused God to recognize him, who he was, and that he said he, he fully followed him? I don't know. I want to be that guy. Gals, do you want to be that lady who, who God would look down at you and be like, that lady fully follows me? Guys, that's, that's our desire, right? We want that, where God would be able to say, that person fully follows me. Well, there's a tricky, uh, there's a tricky situation they were in back in chapter 13. The Lord spake unto Moses in verse 1, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Let, Let me just stop, stop there for a second. second. God had, had promised his people this land. You with me? I love, I love that, that last song that they sang, I trust in God. He'll, He'll never, never fail. fail. He, he made, made a promise here. here. I'm going to give my people this land. land. Guess, Guess what? what? He, he sends 12 people to that land to spy it out. Two... Out of the 12, 
came back saying, I trust in God. He'll give it to us. We'll see a little bit more of what they said. But two out of the 12 came back saying, I trust in God. The other 10, and the reason that you can only name two of the 12 is because only two of them, only two of their names really echoed on throughout history because they were the two that had the faith, Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb. So he sends them out. These guys that they sent out, they weren't just any old random selection. They were chosen men. They were rulers. They were heads of their families. He pulls these 12 guys out. He sends them over into the land that God had promised to give them. That's why we call it the promised land. If, if God made you a promise, and God has made you promises, will you believe it? I asked the kids, will you believe it for 10 years? What if you don't receive the promise for 20 years? What if you don't receive it? Will you always believe the promise that he gave? Now look, transformed by glory. You remember back last week, we talked about just the glory of God coming down the, before all the people. Remember we talked about Joshua, and Joshua was one of the two that came back believing. I'm not going to really talk, talk about, about Joshua, Joshua today very much. I want to focus on the other one, Caleb. Caleb. Do you remember where it said Joshua, Joshua didn't want to leave the tabernacle? Well, there, well, there was, was other people, people that were around there, there too, that, that were able to witness the glory of God. God. One, one of them named Caleb. Caleb. And, and, and Caleb, Caleb, seeing what he saw, the miracles that God did in Egypt, the glory of the Lord through their traveling, he was transformed to a point where he fully believed. Now, you're not going to fully follow if you don't fully believe. When, when God says he, he fully followed me, it's because he fully believed. We can't be like, eh, I, I think kind of maybe he kind of might keep his promises maybe so No, like if he said it, it's going to happen. That's the heart we have to have, the, that kind of heart of faith. So he sent, sent these uh, 12 people out. They spy out the land. Moses tells them this. He said, we're not going to read all this, but he says, I want you to spy out these things. I want you to spy out the land. Do some recon now. I want you to spy out the people that you see in that land, are they weak, are they strong, are there few or are there many? He says, I want you to check out the cities. I mean, they were gone for 40 days. I mean, this was a big undertaking to go spy out all this. I want you to check the cities out. Are the cities uh, tent cities or are they stronghold type of cities? Uh, check out the agriculture. Is it fat or is it lean? Is there wood there or is there no wood? Bring back some fruit with you. That would have been me. Bring, bring back some fruit with you. I want to eat some of that stuff. So the spies go for 40 days. The land surely does flow with milk and honey, they came back and said. In other words, look, catch this. God had told them that it was a land flowing with milk and honey before they got there. I'm getting ready to get into a segment of fully believing or partially believing. God told him it was a land flowing with milk and honey. They went there, they came back, and they said, it is a land flowing with milk and honey. Guess what they are saying? God was right about that. But they're getting ready to draw a line on other things that they believe God said. When he said, I'll give you that land, they're like, I don't know about that. God give us some grapes, but not the land. They came back, they're like, yeah, it is a land flowing with milk and honey. Here's the proof. They brought these grapes back on these big staffs. Like, could you imagine? I would want to eat, I still to this day, just want to bite of one of those and see what they taste like. They said, yes, it is, but, but, the people are strong. The cities are walled. And even worse, there's giants. All right, 
God was right about that part, but I don't know about the whole, like, I'll give you that land part. Because it looks like they're invincible. Now, this was 10 out of the 12 that came back and said this. They're invincible, let's just say. That's the report that 10 came back. They're, now, go back, go to uh, verse uh, 30. 1330. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. He didn't have a heart of contradiction. He didn't, didn't want to just disagree with the other ten. His heart was a heart of conviction. I know we can do it because God said it's ours. When you have been in the presence of God and, and God gives you promises and you know that He is real and He is a present God and then He also gives you promises, a person that's transformed by the glory of God is going to grab hold of those promises forever. This was one of those guys. He had seen the miracles, he had seen his glory, he had a promise, and he's ready to go fight some giants right now. He, he didn't even say, let's come up with a plan. Let's, he's like, we've got God, let's go right now. That's some awesome faith. He had a promise. He, call, he, calls, he calls the people together, he stills all the people. I love what Tozer said, he said, the things that are of earth belong to sight, reason, and our senses. The things that are of heaven belong to faith, trust, and confidence in God. When the Lord says something and, 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 and drives us to do something that only the Lord can see happen, we can't walk by sight. We have to walk by faith. We have to trust in God because everything that, is a, that we're against seems maybe it, sometimes impossible. What's in front of me looks like something that would be just an invincible force. But if God says go, and if God says I want you to go forward and I want to give you something on up ahead, we have to go. We have to go by faith. Look, look at how he was transformed. Look at that. I love it. He said, still the people before Moses. He said, let us go up at once. You see, there's an urgency. You see that? When you've been transformed by the glory of God and you're believing his promises, there's an urgency that's just in your heart. Like, we can't just sit around and waste our lives. We need to do it. We need to go. He said, let's go up at once. There's urgency. You also see renewed faith when you've been transformed by the glory of God. There's a renewed faith. He says, we will possess it. God said it. We'll possess it. He said it's ours. It's going to be ours. It's just that renewed faith. You know, when, when, we're, when we're renewing our mind day after day after day, some of what we're doing is we're just claiming all those promises in God's word over and over and over again. And man, our spirit is renewed and it's just like there's so much joy that's overflowing in our life because we just believe God. There's a godly confidence there when you've been transformed by the glory of God. He says, we are well able to overcome. Now, we're talking to a 40-year-old dude right now. This guy is, this guy is he is, he, you could say, well, the guy's he's 40, he's, he's probably in really great shape. Maybe he was an awesome warrior. And maybe he's just like that guy. You know what I'm saying? He, he's, maybe he was just that guy that thinks he can just whip everybody. <laughs> that's not who he is. That's, that's not who Caleb was. Caleb was that guy who just believed God. Like, we need to be that guy. Ladies, you need to be that gal who just believes God. He, 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 he tries to steal the people. Steal the people. And I, I also want to remind you, the mission was never, Moses never sent them over to say, see if we can do it. That, that was never the mission. 
It was spy out the land, see about this, 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 counting the cost kind of thing. You know, see about this, this, this. He didn't say come back and let us know if we can do it or not. He just said go and come back. And they all come back and they brought back something that they didn't get asked to go do to begin with. Caleb's like, let's go. Everybody's fearful. I I just wrote down, when you're not transformed by the glory of God, like these other people who were so fearful, when you're not transformed by the glory of God, there's no urgency. You would be like, we can't go. There's no faith. Like they said, we aren't able. There's no confidence. Like they said, they're stronger than we are. There's exaggerated details. They said all the people were giants. Not every single person was a giant, but they're like, all of them are giants. You know the things that we tell ourselves and we make, our, make it worse in our heads because of fear? When you're not transformed by the glory of God, that fear builds stories in our minds that aren't even real and true. When you aren't transformed by the glory of God, you're completely devoid of any self-assurance. Like they said, we are grasshoppers in our own sight. They said, we're grasshoppers in their sight, but they were saying, we're grasshoppers in our own sight. You've already lost, man. You've already lost. But Caleb's over here like, no, no, hold on a second. Giants, whatever, we got God. We've got God. <laughs> you know, let, let's, let's just kind of like make a little application here. you got promises of God. It doesn't matter what you're up against. i got God. Get to that place where you say, I've got God. I don't care what's in front of me. I've got God. They, they begin to weep and cry in chapter 14. I mean, that they all begin to weep. Now, let me just remind you of something. There's a lot of people, probably myself included, if I really thought about it. I haven't really thought about it specifically. But there's a lot of people who have shed unnecessary tears because of unnecessary fears. These people are weeping because of giants. Unnecessarily, because God had already said he was going to give it to them. You know, sometimes it, 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 it would behoove us to take a step back and be like, what am I worried about in this life? What are all the things that I am so worried about? Because you might be shedding unnecessary tears for those unnecessary fears. They all were crying. They're weeping. And they're like, I wish we would have died in Egypt or in the wilderness. Look at that, verse 2, at the end of it. They said, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in the wilderness? You guys see what he's saying here? Just look at how irrational we can be at times. You know what I'm saying? They would rather either die in Egypt, or be slaves in Egypt, than simply obey God. Now, I say simply obey God. Sure, there was giants in their face, but I got God, and he said it, and he wasn't confusing us when he said it. He said, I'll give you this land. They would rather go back to Egypt than just take God at his word. I like what um, old missionary Hudson Taylor, he wrote a letter back to his wife, and he said, Honey or babe or sweetheart, I don't don't remember what he called her. He said, all we have is 25 cents and the promises of God. Guess what? That's all he needed. The promises of God. That might be you. That might be you this morning. You're like, hey, uh, I'm trying to walk by faith here. And from my perspective, all I got is 25 cents. But do you have the promises of God? They... They go on. They're like, let's make a captain over so we can go back to Egypt. Goodness gracious, come on. They, Joshua and, 
and, and, and Caleb begin to make a plea. They just begin to rip their clothes. They begin to plead. They're like, guys, the land is good. God's going to give it to us. Don't rebel. Don't fear. God's with us. They're, they're trying to rally the people to get behind them. The Lord's with us. The Lord's with us. You know what we call that? We call that the presence of the Lord. You know what else we call that? The glory of the Lord. Caleb's like, Joshua's like, guys, the glory of the Lord's among us. He hasn't left us. He's still here. We still have him. I say, man, you're a little hopping this morning. Here's why. Because this group of people, this generation ruined it for their entire generation. This group of people who decided to live in fear and not obey God and follow Him fully, they ruined it for their entire generation. We know the rest of the story, right? God said, after all this is going down, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but let's just do it. After this is going down, God's like, none of you guys, over 20 years old, except for Joshua and Caleb, none of y'all are going to go into that land. Every one of y'all is going to die out here in the wilderness. Their entire generation. I'm so thankful there was a couple that didn't back down. Guys, we're getting ready to lose an entire generation of people who claim to be God's people, but they won't live and march on and go in faith like, with the heart like God's with us. We got this. Let's go. Giants, psh, we got God, man. I want to be one of those guys. Don't you guys? Don't you want to be a Caleb and a Josh? We're just like, let's go. We got God. That was their heart, but then the people's heart were like, Psh, stone these guys. Stone these, who, stone these guys. Let's just kill the guys that think we can do it. Kill the two that think we can. <laughs> so they get ready to do that. Oh, this is good. Verse 10, but all the congregation bade stone them with stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before the children of of Israel. God, God uh, is upset with them. Moses begins to, uh, to plead on their behalf. Then we get down to verse 21. He said, the whole world, the whole earth is going to be filled with my glory. Go, jump down to verse 24. Caleb. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land. Him will I bring into the land. Let's fast forward. Jump, jump to Joshua 14 now. They said, God said, before he said, this Caleb guy, he's got a different, another spirit. He said, but all of my people, they've tempted me these ten times. Like the people over and over and over again were just completely faithless. I just want to ask you these personal applications real quick. I just, Do you believe that God is really able in your life? The things that you're going through right now. Do you think he is able? Or do you question, is he able? He is able. God is good. Is this you? God is good, but... Or is it, God is good, period? Will God really keep that one promise? Or is it, God will keep every promise? I mean, would God actually punish me for that little bit of disobedience? Or is it, 
I'm going to wholly follow him. All that happened when he was 40 years old. All right. We're going to fast forward here in closing. 45 years later. How old is the guy now? 85. All right. You heard me ask these kids. Are you going to trust him for 20, 30, 40 more years? Yeah, right? He's 85 years old. I love it. Chapter 14 of Joshua, verse 6. When you get there, say truth. Yeah. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, now he's talking to Joshua now, all right? The two oldest dudes in the land, <laughs> Joshua and Caleb. Caleb says this. He says, Joshua, he says, you know, you know something. What does he say? He says, thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. He says, 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land and brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. This is the two old guys talking. They were both on the same boat here. They both had the same faith. He said, you know, you remember, I wholly followed the Lord. Now at this point in Scripture, they're getting ready to go on and fully take over the land as much as possible and start taking over different lands. Each, each tribe was getting ready to go have their own place. Now, Caleb being the oldest and having a specific promise to his name, he stepped up and made this request. He said, And Moses swear on that day, verse 9, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. And he said, These forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day Four score and five years old. He's 85. You could also insert something else here. If God gives you a promise, he's going to give you the strength to fulfill that promise. If God tells you he wants you to do something, he's going to give you the ability to do it one way or another. He had given him a promise to have this land. Guess what? They had been warring, they had been fighting. But guess what? There were still giants in the land. So the probably second oldest dude in the whole nation comes to Moses and he says, I want the land with the giants. I want the in invincible people. I want, I want to go take that land. 85 years old. Look what he says. He says, as yet... I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. He said, give me this mountain. I can still go and fight right now. And I'm sure as, they were, as he was in the wilderness for all those 40 years, watching all of his family and friends die by the wayside, but watching his clothes and his shoes never wax old, and, ne and his strength never waxing old. He's just waiting on the day when he would get to that point to be able to live out the promise that God had told him, I'm going to give you this land. He didn't just say, I'm going to give it to your seed. He said, I'm going to give it to Caleb. He's like, I've been waiting on this for 40 years, Joshua. Give me that mountain with the giants. Whew. This is a guy that has been transformed by the glory of God, and it changed his entire life. Changed his entire life. He wasn't backing down now. Guys, it, if you've been in the glory of God, your mind should stay that same way. Give me the land with the giants if that's what you want me to have, God. I don't care. Every now and then you got to take land out of the giant's hand.
says, give me this mountain. I'll take the unconquered mountain so we can conquer it for the Lord's glory. For thou heard us in that day, a few more verses and we'll close, how the Anakims were there, that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, look at verse 12, right in the middle of verse 12. It says, if so be, the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. He's over here saying, give me this mountain, not because of his own strength, though he realized God had given him still strength. What he's saying is, if the glory of God is with me today, as it has been this whole time personally, I'm going to be able to drive them out. All of his hope was hinged and based on his understanding of the promises of his God. My hope is hinged on all the promises of God. Could you imagine being 85 years old, taking on all these giants? Why would he do such a thing? Because he was transformed by the glory of God long ago and he wasn't backing up now that reminds me of the transforming power of God the promises of God God's power on display that reminds me of just one other example of his power and his promise his power at Calvary Jesus God his love his power, God's presence on display. I mean, God with us, Emmanuel. Glory. He beheld his glory. The glory of the only, as of the only begotten of the Son, of the Father. That was, his, that was the glory, God's glory revealed in the flesh. In the power of Jesus over death in the grave. That's the glory of God. The promise that came from that, that all who believe can be saved, that's a promise that every one of us should grab onto by faith. If you grab onto that promise, that I can be saved by faith, that's something that will transform your whole life. You'll get to be an 85-year-old person if God lets you live that long. And you'll be like, my hope is still in the promises of God. He's playing it. I had no idea he was playing that. Yeah. I'm standing on the promises of God. That's what we'll do every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're getting baptized, you can get changed. And ask a question I ask every week. With every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, if you've never by faith accepted that promise of salvation you don't know that you're saved but you'd like to be saved you'd like to know that when you die you have a home in heaven if you'd like to know that will you just look at me until I see you I want to know who I'm talking to look at me until I see you you say I don't know if I'm saved I'm not going to call you out or embarrass you I just want to know who I'm talking to anybody, anybody at all like that just look at me until I see you see you sir See you, sir. Anybody else? I'm going to scan the room one more time. Anybody else? Just look at me until I see you, just so I know who I'm talking to. So I don't know if I died today, I'd go to heaven. But I would like to know that. All right. You two gentlemen that looked at me, I just want to tell you, Jesus said in his word 
through the through the Holy Spirit, the, these words get penned in Scripture. He said, "Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved." That means you, me, him, her, him, her, everybody. Whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says, "For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation." We believe with our heart that Jesus died on the cross. We believe that he was buried in that tomb. And we believe that he rose again from the dead. That's the gospel message. That gospel message is what saves us. But we have to, with the heart of faith, we have to believe that we have to accept his forgiveness. And you say, what do you mean? What's that look like, accepting his forgiveness? Jesus died in my place and your place. He died. He chose to do that for us. We should be paying for our our own crimes and sins. But Jesus said, hold on a minute. I want to die for these guys. I want to die for them. I want to take their punishment for them. And so it's by faith when we receive Christ as our Savior, He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He washes all of our sin away. Any any sin, any ugliness, anything that you've ever done, He just washes it away. And the Bible says you become a new creature in Christ. I say in Christ because we are going through Jesus for salvation. And so if you would like to do that this morning right where you sit, I'd love to pray with you right now. I always say I'm just a messenger. It's not between me and you. It's between you and the Lord. And so if you would like to pray... And if you'd like to get right with Jesus once and for all and be saved, I encourage you to pray this with me right where you sit in your heart. Just pray, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. Please forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me. Make me a new creature. Make me a child of God right now I believe you died on the cross and I believe you were buried and rose again from the dead I believe you did that for me so I'm asking you right here and right now to save me if you prayed that this morning just now if you just prayed that just now and you meant business you were serious just look back up at me for one more second I just want to tell you something else if you prayed that just now and you meant it, just look at that for one more second. I see your hand. Okay. What I wanted to tell you was you are at this moment a child of God in the family you've been cleansed because of your faith in what he's done praise God She was ready to get baptized Wednesday. We should have just went with it Wednesday, but 
It's today. We did it today. Have you been saved, Sabrina? Do you want to live for Jesus forever? It's upon your profession of faith. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. God is good. Amen. I love y'all.